Hey everyone, my name is Dave. Welcome to the NTD Racing Speed Shop. Behind me is Trooper, which in about two months will be a class 11 VW bug racer at the Mint 400. It's gonna be awesome, but I, I feel like we got a long way to get there. And one of the things that we're gonna do is we're going to use King Shocks, which are made specifically for class 11s, but we need to kind of build a perch on the trailing arm. So we got this gusset set here from uh car tech it's like 51 bucks it really it's i mean i was gonna make my own but i was like somebody else designed it already the thing is though there's no videos i couldn't find any information on how to put one of these together so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna try to make a video in case you're doing the same thing this is how you make a gusset set work on the trailing arms of a this is a 1973 vw bug and we'll see if we can beat those things up and make them survive a race or two, starting with the Min 400. Let's go ahead and get to this build. All right, this is the back of the bug set up on our trusty uh, Home Depot bucket. Uh, there's just not a lot of weight back here and there isn't much to it. And so here are the swing arms that we're gonna be welding these plates to. And man, I've been watching some videos of guys taking the brakes apart. I haven't done it on one of these before, but I, I heard a lot of bad four letter words. And I just think, you know, right now the brakes work fine. Everything's working good. I'm just gonna do a little clean up with a wire brush, a little spray paint. I'm gonna leave them on and I'm gonna try welding to here and, uh, and I'll just take my time welding so I don't transfer too much heat into the bearings. And if I do notice that they get bound up after welding, then I'll, I'll do something to them. But for the next race we're gonna do, I can have this ready in two months. I just don't have time to spend a lot of time on a brake job and all that, and get all the parts and all those things. So. We're just going to weld right to it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this bolt off. I think I found that the head of a 7 16 inch bolt fits right inside there. So I'm going to kind of take a bolt and weld a nut to it so I can get in there and take those things off, move the brake lines, and then I'm going to drop these things off and I'm going to prepare them, cut these perches off and prepare these things to weld with the brakes and the bearings all in there. Let's see what happens. Okay, so as it turns out, a Home Depot bucket is not up for that task, but maybe a rigid toolbox is. These bolts right here, however, were a lot more difficult to get out than I had expected. It's a 17 millimeter Allen tool, and so that went in there and it came out no problems. I know people replace those, I'm not. I opted just to go and buy the tool kit. This is in, the link for this is in the description below. I think it costs like 24 bucks at Amazon and it gives me all the way up to a 19 millimeter in case I need that somewhere else. So, uh, so there you go. The more I take apart this VW bug, the more I like it. A lot of the parts just seem like they work really well together. Anyway, here's a trailing arm. You saw I just cut the, the arms off and everything. Now I've got to kind of come up with a plan. And let me show you how this whole thing works. Basically what you have is you have two identical plates. And I didn't realize how it all went together, so that was pretty cool. Uh, two identical plates and these two plates that look like this kind of follow the profile line of that whole seam right there. Then you got this other plate, which ends up kind of make, you know, boxing this whole thing off. It's bent already and it fits in here. I think there's gonna be a little bit of shaping to make that thing sit in there nicely so I can TIG weld, but that sits in there. And basically what you'll have is these plates on the top and the bottom that strengthens everything and also gives you a landing point for our shocks. We're gonna be putting king shocks on these. Uh, so the, kind of the big picture game plan for how we're going to weld this whole thing together I got to clean some of these up just a little bit more. I'm not going to take them all the way down to the metal because I don't want to accidentally cut in there and, and make this thing weaker and nobody's ever going to see that. So I just want to kind of take it down just so it clears everything. I'm going to go ahead and grind this seam down so, so I can get to both edges of the seam. So I'll grind that down a little bit, clean that up. I'll clean up on both sides and then I'll clean this thing up with my uh, clutch surface conditioning tool. I'll put this thing on here and then I'm just gonna start tacking it, small tacks all along here and then bending it as, as required to get it to sit down flush uh, on there. I'll put the other one on, I'll tack that one on and then I'll put this one in there and I'll tack that one in between. And then from there, it's gonna be just small sections of weld, maybe longer over here when I, I don't have to worry about heating up this bearing, but really the thing I'm gonna be worried about is if I, you know, if you started welding here and you welded boom, 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 all the way across, by the time you get here, you're gonna bend the whole thing. It's just gonna be totally distorted. So it's gonna be small welds, let it cool down and be patient. Do a weld, you know, a couple, you know, attack here, you know, and basically 
close in all the tax and as the thing's cooling down i'll be doing some other jobs and not just trying to finish this thing really quickly and that'll keep me from distorting this too much we'll go ahead and get these things cleaned up and get everything spotless and ready to tig weld After all that cleaning the metal, it is time to weld. You want bright, shiny metal when you do some welding. And it's not gonna be perfect, but close. I did practice already on one of them so that I could kind of be semi-smart when I'm talking to you on this one over here. To weld today, I went with the Harbor Freight Vulcan Pro TIG 205. This is a new welder to me, some new features. So uh, hopefully this will go okay. I'm gonna be welding at about 145 most of the time, maybe dialing up to 155 on some of the welds there, but most of the tack welds, you know, just 145, we'll see how that works. Uh, and then, so what I've kind of learned and how I'm gonna get this thing together is, uh, first I'm gonna start with the shiny side of this down because that other piece is gonna be welded to the center of this underneath. The question I kind of had as I was putting this thing together was, does it go together kind of butted up against the side, which I don't think it does, unless you're in there MIG welding, it might, maybe you could fill that gap in. My plan is to TIG weld it and kind of set it up on the top over here. You can see, I'm gonna try to get it as close as I can over here I'm going to put one tack over here and then I'm going to line it up to make sure that this side is still lined up. Once that side is lined up, I'll kind of start tacking all along this side and then I'm going to have to go over and grab my, my hammer and kind of beat this side down a little bit to make it put the tacks on. I'll put these things on both sides and then I'm going to start putting this plate in the center. The plan is just to tack weld the crap out of this thing. Uh, and then just do some small welds so I don't put some heat in because remember I still got the bearings in here I don't think that'd be much of a problem uh, as long as I don't you know get too excited about the welds and you kind of see I did a little bit of a TIG weld there and I stopped and a TIG weld there I think that's going to keep the heat down and keep this thing from warping and distorting too much while I'm doing the welding let's go ahead and get to tack welding first Pretty much take that weld all day. You know, it's all right. All right, last thing to show you is I'm kind of getting down to the end of this project. I like the pulse 
on the outside corners. I still think I just like setting an amperage, turning the pulse off. I'm gonna try 155 uh, amps. It's a little bit more I've done on the last couple. I'm just still trying to zero in on a good amperage setting for this uh, inside corner here. I'm gonna go ahead and put it down here and just without pulse, just kind of pedaling all the way down and then just trying to run with the, uh, with the stick of the consumable to kind of make that stack of dimes as best I can uh on this one so again new machine i'm learning again you can kind of see there was some bad shielding gas coverage there and i think the gas lens is doing a lot better uh with that so let's go ahead and do this one and if i haven't mentioned it these vulcan defender gloves are awesome these are some of the best tig welding gloves i've ever i've ever used they're 12 dollars at harbor freight uh, unbelievable can't beat it You might want to shield your eyes if you get queasy for this next part because what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and weld this seam right in here with the mig welder and we're really close to those bearings so what we're going to do is we're going to weld about halfway to right about here pulling the weld along and then once i've done that weld i'm going to go ahead and bung this soaking wet cotton cloth down inside there to try to soak up some of the heat before it burns all that other stuff in there. And it's not gonna look pretty, but it's gonna work. I'm using the Vulcan Omni Pro 220 for this one. This is a MIG and a TIG welder and it's my favorite MIG welder. I got rid of my Miller because I like this one so much. And uh, let's go ahead and see what kind of a weld it'll put down. All right, well, hopefully you learned something in this video. I know I sure did. I'd never gotten this deep into a VW bug before. I used a lot of tools in this video. If you're interested in any of those, check out the link in the description below where it'll take you to our Amazon store. It won't cost you anything more, but we'll earn a couple bucks on commission uh, for those sales. I hope that you found value in this video and we have earned your subscribe today. And even more importantly, if you can activate the notifications by clicking on the bell on the YouTube screen there, that sure helps us out and make sure that you see the next video. And we can't wait to see you next week. Take care of yourself.